Cool. So I'm sure, I'm sure you've all read this cover to cover if you haven't. Um, and um, it isn't a toilet book, I think it's been, it's been described. Um, I think the, uh, the great thing about this is it's a book that you can keep going back to. I don't know if you've ever read Clive Woodward's Winning. I think I've read it four times. Um, because each time it keeps giving. And I think it's the same with Mike's book, is that in each chapter there's a little nugget that will become relevant um, at a certain, uh, certain time. So I treat it as kind of a business and a sort of book about growth and, and, and life. And um, just going to ask the, the kind of first question, Mike. So you sort of talked about every ball being any thought of life and it being a book about growth um, and how through different sports we can learn to be courageous. But um, although all the other balls are different, so I mean, I'm a big with belief fan, which is the best sport in the world, in the tennis, I think. I mean, there's two of us in the room doing that. Um, but what can other sports like football, rugby and cricket learn from tennis? Because I think it's one of the most difficult games that I've ever come across it in terms of all of the things that you taught me about. And how do you think those learning from tennis about those sports will generally help us live our lives a bit more courageously? Well, I think, the, I suppose this idea of the philosophy of every ball, and, I, and I'll just read it to you because over the years, um, I've sort of had several different drafts of what, what, what every ball actually means. And, and where I'm at now with it is, is this, and um, tennis actually isn't mentioned. Uh, so uh, you could apply this to any sport that you're thinking about, um, but beyond that you can apply this hopefully to each and every day. And it simply reads, we are committed to fight for every ball, to run down every ball and to play every ball with courageous purpose. We see every ball as an opportunity to explore our becoming selves, our curiosity and creativity. And we know that every ball extends beyond our sport as we learn the fundamental life skills that enable us to thrive in an ever-changing world. So that, that is the philosophy of every ball. And, and I suppose you could begin to replace some of those words with we are committed to fight for every day. So that's our starting point. We're committed to fight for every day. And what, what does that mean? You know, it means seize the day. It means every single day is a new opportunity. It's another gift. And it's a chance, really, to explore our becoming selves. And we have a, a, a strong saying here within the program that, you know, becoming is better than being. And those of you who have studied a little bit of Carol Dweck's work, around the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. There's a very, very strong emphasis of that whole idea about we're constantly becoming. And here at Holton UK, we have a saying, um, you know, Nick continually, continually reminds us, is, is we're never nearly there yet. And I think that's a great position to be in, about we're never nearly there yet. We've never nearly arrived. And uh, we want to improve rather than prove. We want to become rather than be. And I mentioned the other night, there are, um, or the other day, yesterday, I think, um, talking about the book a little bit, but there are three C's in, in that sort of philosophy. Um, the first one is courageous purpose. And as Jez, Jez answered, asked the question, how can we be more courageous? Um, there is also two others, there's curiosity and creativity. <coughs> and I think this idea about courageous purpose, I really define, you know, to be courageously purposeful about what we do means that can we do the right thing at the right time and in the right place, or be in the right place to do the right thing at the right time. And I think applying this idea of uh, courage, we need, in order to be courageous, we've got to be curious. And I think if we're curious, then that gives us an opportunity to be creative. And the idea of being creative is about taking, and, and we have it up perhaps on the wall here, no we don't, but the idea is to go as far as we can using all that we've got. And I see so much of this in our youngsters that we work with where they don't really yet understand and it's our job as coaches to support them and to help them understand how can they go as far as they can using all they've got on any given day 
in any given performance, and it's about looking at and saying, this is what I'm holding today, these are my resources, these are this what I'm going to mobilize to be as creative as I can. And, and I think there's a big link between that, going as far as we can, using all we've got, and to being courageous. So I think there's a big, yeah, a big extension beyond sport and into everything else that we do. Cool. So it talks about courageous purpose, um, and life has mentors in terms of which we've got to be courageous, no more so in sport. But I didn't know this, but especially with injuries. Now, earlier in your career, you had a bad knee injury, um, which I never knew about. Um, I'm interested. So how did you use that injury, actually, as a positive force to make you stronger? Well, I think, um, certainly, I, I, had a, I had a number of actual quite serious injuries. first one was um, in, in Arizona. I landed on the court um, going for a ball, and I ruptured the bursa in my elbow, mm -hmm. and um, had... Uh, had two or three quite serious surgeries. Uh, I was told that I wouldn't play tennis again. Um, and uh, that, that, was a, that was a pretty interesting experience. How old were you then? I was about 21. That was in the middle of my college tennis career. Um, but uh, yeah, so six weeks, six weeks, six months, uh, six months later after a lot of rehab and hard work, I managed to get back onto the tennis court. Um, and uh, actually finished my sort of strongest season as a, as a college, college tennis player in the States. And then a little bit later on, um, uh, I had developed a couple of uh, quite serious problems with my knees. Um, had three or four knee surgeries, had all my cartilage out of both knees, so I don't have any cartilage in either knee at the moment. Um, and uh, yeah, was again told time to time to. Um, you know, shelf, shelf the tennis and you know, look for a different career really. you're not going to be doing much more tennis coaching. That was, sort of 20, that was about 20 years ago almost now. Um, and I think those, those, those injuries, for me, is what I've described as wilderness times. And I think we all have moments where we're in the, where, where we're in the wilderness. And those might be within our own personal lives. They might be professionally, uh, they might be within our own sport. And um, I, was, I was reminded um, you know, many years ago of, uh, of, of a guy who, um, who had quite an impact actually on world history. And funnily enough, uh, he, was, he was Paul the Apostle. And um, one of the things that he is quoted, in, uh, quoted as saying is that Suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character. And character produces hope. And that sort of succession of things, I think, I, I was really, really fascinated by. You know, and, and, and he goes on to say, therefore, we should, we should seek joy in our suffering. Right? Because we're going through that process of the refiners, going through the refiner's fire so to speak. So if I'm suffering in any, in any way, shape or form, and we talk a lot to the kids about, on, when, I, when I refer to the kids, I'm referring to the youngsters that we're, we're working with on the tennis court, about are they prepared to suffer on the court? Because as they suffer, they're developing perseverance, and in that perseverance, character. And, and funnily enough, I was having a, a good chat with John the other day about you know, we, we, we all talk about this idea that sport develops character, but it also reveals character. And I think those two things happen hand in hand, that actually my character is being revealed through my sport, through suffering, through difficulty. And it's only in difficult moments that we begin to understand what type of people we are. When everything is going well, and it's, it's all hunky-dory, I don't think we get a real glimpse, but when things are tough, when things are tough in sport, when things are tough off the court, off the sports field, to so say personal life, business life, whatever it is, um, that's when character is revealed and developed, and in that sort of perseverance, um, ultimately, is where we actually gain hope, and, and, and for me, hope is a kind of an 